Okay, so uh, the next talk uh, of uh, Hartmut, uh, he want to present us uh, the new GIS features in MariaDB and MySQL. Uh, I visited his talk last year also, it was a great talk, uh, so I'm uh, really uh, looking forward to this talk again. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's not really about new GIS features, but about all GIS features. There has not been that many changes since last year, so it's general coverage. So, oh, no speaker introduction slide. What did I do to these? <laughs> so a quick intro. My name is Hartmut Holzgräfe. I'm from Bielefeld here in Germany, and I have been working for several years in the MySQL support department and now switched over to the RamiaDB support department. And I do a lot of uh, geo stuff on the side for OpenStreetMap. That's why we have this printer here, for example, for my yesterday's talk. But today it is not about OpenStreetMap, but about more general August things. So is first introduction how uh, geo features in databases work is in geospatial processing we usually have a uh, few different types of usually two dimensional data types the simplest one is obviously the point then we have lines like streets or borders we have polygons that describe uh, closed areas and we have in databases, a special general geometry type that can contain all of these. And in addition to the simple types, we have also types that can contain multiple objects. So for points, we can have a collection type, a multi point that can contain one or more points. Same for lines, there is multi line string, there is multi polygon. That is a bit special because it not only can have multiple polygons inside, but you can also have a polygon with an exclave on the inside. So like a ring that has an outer border and an inner border. And then there's also the general geometry collection that can contain an arbitrary set of all of the previous types. So this looks like this. We have on the left side the simple things like points, line strings and polygons. And on the right side we have the collections, multi-point sets, multi-line strings, multi-polygon. Here is simple polygon on the right side. On the left side a polygon with an interior. So the actual polygon is only the ring here. And so we can process all these simple types but and also have some additional properties of these geometries like obviously the coordinates where the feature is for lines we can uh, determine the length of the line for an area we for a polygon we can calculate the area covered by the polygon uh, in general, for a line string, we can check whether if it is closed or not. And we can calculate the bounding rectangle. So the rectangle that is lo just large enough to fully fit all the data in. And then the next thing we might be interested in is not only a single geometry or geometry collection, but also spatial relationships between two or more geometries. So for these we have simplified uh, this uh, set of relations, like one geometry is contained in another one fully. It may share the border, but it is fully inside. Or they may totally disjoint, sh not sharing anything. They may be equal, well, that's simple. They may intersect, so only a part of one is inside the other. Or they may overlap. So overlap is a more general case than intersect, as overlap allows that one is fully inside the other. Intersect is always just partial overlap. And we can have touches, 
and they only share borders or corner points. And we can have within, that is just the opposite of contains. So when we take the red one is the first geometry, the blue one is second. Then here the second is contained by the first one. And here the first one is inside the second one. If you swap them, then it would be opposite. The other one would contain and be inside. So let's look how this is actually implemented in SQL. And first, we need to create tables that have this kind of type at all. And for this, you see the first create statement here. That is how it was originally implemented in MySQL. So you just have geometry as a native type. And like any other column, you can just say we create a column named shape that is of type geometry. And we can add a spatial index to it. And the official open GIST standard syntax is a bit different. As in most databases, these types are not native, but are uh, added by extensions that can't always change the parser. So this wouldn't work as the parser doesn't know what geometry is. So there they use a workaround, you create the table first with all the regular columns you need. And then there's a special storage procedure, add geometry column, that you can use to then say, okay, I have a table named test, or a database named test, and in there a table named T2. And to this I want to add a geometry uh, column named shape in the second step. And in MariaDB, we support both syntaxes, starting with MariaDB 10.1. So you can use the simple native way that only we support, or only MySQL and MariaDB support, or you could do it in a more general way that also would work for example for PostGIS or the Spatialite extension to uh, SQLite. Then to insert spatial data, the simplest way is to use the well-known text format and then convert that to a geometry using this conversion function. And so we have examples here for a point. For a point you just give its two coordinates. For a line string, you put in a list of all the points that make up the line. And for a polygon, you also have the list of points that make up the polygon, and the last point has to be the same as the first one, so that you have a closed line. And then, if you want to query spatial features, you can again use, for example, if you want to query uh, points that are in a certain rectangular area, you just create a polygon that is actually a rectangle, and then you can query in an example table that I will describe later. Uh, here, the number of points that are within this rectangle. So we have the spatial relationship uh, function, as described on the previous uh, slide, that checks whether one thing is contained in another. And then we can just count what comes out. We can also do this in a more complex way, using more sophisticated spatial relationships, like here I have two tables, one having points of interest in Germany and one having areas in Germany. But now I want to have all the points of interest that are post boxes and I have the border polygon of Bielefeld as a border shape and I want to have all the post box points that are contained in the area of Bielefeld. So you can make it much more complicated if you want, but these are the basic operations you usually need, and then you go up from there. So now, quick overview how uh, spatial features in MySQL and later in MariaDB emerged. It, started, it all started in 2004 with MySQL 4.1 that had the first implementation of uh, geo features. 
but for spatial relationships, it did not uh, support true relationships. It only always operated on the bounding rectangle of a geometry. I have a picture for that later to show what that means. And we had support for spatial indexes, but only in the MyISOM storage engine. So you had to either choose whether you want to have a spatial index to speed things up, or whether you wanted to have full transactional uh, asset features, then you would have to use InnoDB tables, but would lose the, uh, the feature to have indexes. This has changed recently. We get to that later. And we had this feature since 2004, but it has not seen much adoption. It is the feature set was pretty small, especially due to the fact that it was based on bounding rectangles. And I think in all the years I have been working for MySQL support, we had four customer issues that were actually about GIS features, and nobody else was using it. So, yeah, this is the effect of only checking relationships per bounding rectangle. So this is the result of the previous query for post boxes in Bielefeld. When you go by bounding rectangles, you also get some results that are actually outside of the city borders. And when you have two spatial relationships, then you really only get all the features that are really contained within the borders. That's, this one performs much better, but this produces the results you usually actually want. So then for quite a while, nothing at all happened. And then in 2011, MariaDB 5.3 came out. And that was the first release that actually lifted this bounding rectangle limitation and really operated on true spatial relationships. So that was the first version that really could do this instead of just faking it like this. And two years later, in MySQL 5.6, Oracle ca uh, caught up, and then MySQL also supported two spatial relationships. Uh, but still, on both sides, we were not really seeing much adoption. Maybe because it had been sort of useless for so long. So then, in two years, Two years ago, in 2015, with MariaDB 10.1, we put some more effort in and almost there's a few very small details that are missing. But we got, for all practical concerns, we got fully OpenGIS standard compliant. So we, for example, added some special information schema tables that are required by that standard so that you have information schema tables that give you information of all the tables and columns that use GIS features in your database. We added the standard compliant syntax to add geometry columns that we've seen on the previous slide. So that now standard compliant GIS SQL would work too. And we added principal support for spatial relationship IDs, but we only store and compare the spatial relationship IDs values. We do not really base calculations on it. So if the world is still flat, no matter what spatial relationship ID and what projection you use. But at least it complains if you want to insert Google Mercato data in a table that is meant for latitude, longitude, projection, and vice versa. And then MySQL 5.7 also added a few more GIS features, but also they changed from using the homegrown implementation of spatial relationship checks and a geometry type implementation and switch to using the Boost geometry library. And they also added support for spatial indexes in InnoDB. So you didn't have to make the choice anymore whether you wanted to have fast uh, GIS uh, queries based on spatial indexes or a transaction safe database. Now you can have both. So the second one is a pretty big thing. The first one 
is something that only uh, developers have to care about. It doesn't change the behavior or the feature set on the SQL user side. And now this year with MariaDB 10.2, uh, we switched from using the Percona XDB implementation of IndyDB back to using the Oracle MySQL, uh, uh, IndyDB engine for MySQL 5.7 and put our patches on top. And that also gave us the spatial index feature of MySQL 5.7, so we now also have this. So on the MariaDB side, you also don't have to decide anymore whether you want to have one or the other. And some other features we have been planning to do, but have not really delivered anything of some time not even really have started on it, I have to confess, is we are thinking about adding support for a third coordinate. Not to have the full 3D feature set, but to at least be able to store, for example, altitude information in landscapes. And we have plans to switch, to optionally switch from using floating point Native floating point uh, data types in the underlying implementation to optionally also provide the high precision uh, math features that we also have for decimal and uh, numeric types. So if you're really, 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 really cautious about not having rounding arrows, then you would could use that features one that feature once it actually is implemented. And we have been thinking about putting support for a conversion of uh, the well-known text format and also the well-known binary format into the actual internal native format used by uh, MariaDB to support that also already on the client side so that you can do the parsing on the client side already and can do faster imports into the database. Why that matters, I'll also show in a minute. But I gave this talk last year and that was the feature list last year already and meanwhile we had the 10.2 major release. Nothing is from, these, from this feature list made it into the release and also in 10.3 that is coming soon that also has a different fuel cost, so that will not have any relevant GIS improvement either. And what's happening on the MySQL side, I don't really know, because Oracle is not that open about what they have in the queue. The only thing I know is that they have been working on uh, adding true spatial relationships and projection support. They gave a short presentation about that on FOSDEM in Brussels earlier this year. And that means that finally the world in MySQL will not be flat anymore, but they have geometries that really know that the Earth is uh, either a perfect ball or actually a ellipsoid, so that you can have two distance calculations by just giving two coordinates. And it, doesn't, and it does take into account the latitude and longitude. It does not just pretend that the world is just stretched out on a rectangle. So just one small feature that they have revealed. So small in number, but it's a pretty big thing if you really need this kind of operations. And I think I missed. Yeah. So she just reminded me that we have one more thing in uh, Tender 2, not only that we now have spatial indexes in InnoDB, we also now have GeoJSON as a supported format in addition to well-known text and well-known binary. So you can now parse uh, GeoJSON and put that in a spatial column right away and you can also get results in GeoJSON format. So that is usually much better supported by other languages and tools than 
the SQL value on text format these days. So MySQL MariaDB obviously are not the only open source databases that support GIS. There's also obviously Postgres with the Postgres extension, which is probably without doubt the most powerful solution. And this, compared to uh, our implementation, is adding much more f uh, functions and features than are just required by the OpenGIS standard. So we only have the standard set of functions. PostGIS has a lot of extra stuff we don't support yet. Uh, the funny thing about it is it is not covered by the same license as PostGIS itself, but PostGIS is under the GPL license as MySQL and MariaDB R2. So the usual license shootout between MariaDB, MySQL, and Postgres is not happening in this field. If you want to go for GIS, no matter if it's MySQL, MariaDB, or Postgres, you always have to play by the rules of the GPL. Uh, the installation of the Postgres extension used to be a bit tricky. You had to first install the actual extension, and then you had to import some special SQL files that added all the required functions and data types. But that has changed in recent Postgres versions. I don't ex remember exactly, but somewhere in the nine, nine point something versions. Uh, now you just say create extension Postgres and then it in the background knows what to do and installs everything is needed. So it used to be complicated, now it's simply just one command you need to execute. But you need to execute it for every single database inside the Postgres server that is supposed to have support for these data types. Whereas with MySQL and MariaDB, it's always there out of the box. And also Postgres obviously has a much larger user base. And I think that's rightfully so for it's much larger feature set. And then there is also a spatial extension to SQLite called SpatialLite. That also, also only provides a subset of the OpenGIS feature set. It has support for spatial indexes, but you can't simply use a spatial index via SQL, but only via a native client API. And it's not very often seen in the wild, but it is, for example, used by QGIS for internal storage. Right? And yeah, I already said it. It's MySQL MariaDB. The features are always there. You don't have to uh, explicitly load an extension and enable it. Uh, you can only disable support for GIS at compile time if you really want to have binary as small as possible, but it would only be interested for very interesting for very small embedded systems. So for all the distribution packages, all the vendor packages, the binaries always include GIS support out of the box. So, okay, that has obviously the advantage. You don't need to have any extra components. You don't have to install anything else. And starting from MySQL 5.6 and MariaDB 5.3, both were mostly OpenGIS uh, compati uh, com compliant compatible. And starting with MariaDB 10.1, we are, for all practical purposes, are fully compliant. Yeah, GIS data types of first class citizens is just the same as no install needed. And he, as we've seen on the create table slide earlier, there is our support for using the OpenGIS uh, way to add columns with special procedure calls later. But there's also the native way to just use them as first class citizen types. But there is not much functionality beyond what OpenGIS requires. It's still strictly two-dimensional. 
on the MariaDB side, no support for projections and transformations. Everything is considered a flat world. Oracle will change that in MySQL 8 only, whenever that comes out. The data types are available in all storage engines, because for the storage engine, the geometry column is just a blob. It just has to store it, retrieve it, but it doesn't care whether there is an image in there, text, or uh, gist data. But when it comes to indexes, indexes need to have an understanding of the data contained. So index implementations, originally only in my ISOM, now in my ISOM and uh, in ODB, but not in all the other specialized storage engines out there like not in the TocoDB storage engine, not in the Rocks storage engine that Facebook is working on. But I think that's not much of a of a problem. And I also have to confess that our optimizer is not too clever about uh, using spatial indexes. In most cases, it can only either use a spatial index or a regular index on a table, and not both. I have some numbers on that in a second. So that brings us to the next topic, the performance. And for this, uh, to have some real-world uh, test data, I have patched the OSM to PG SQL import tool that is used to import OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS. And extended that so that you can also populate MySQL or Spatialite tables. And I did an import of the OSM extract for all of Germany. Not the whole world because that would have taken so long, quite too long, but Germany is one of the best covered countries in OSM, so there's a lot of data in there already. So these are the numbers from last year. At that time we had uh, 8 million points of interest. 11 million uh, lines, 28 million polygons from the outer border of Germany down to single buildings, and a total uh, data size of roughly 17 uh, gigabytes when imported. And actually, back last year when I gave this talk for the first time, I had put the this test data in the form of MySQL dump and my ISAM and InnoDB uh, table files on this web server here. I have to confess, I haven't checked whether these are still there and functional. Uh, I will add a note to the slides before I upload them with an updated URL for that. So, what's the performance we are getting for the most simple query ha we had in the example slides earlier, where we just want to have all the points in a certain rectangle. And these are roughly the coordinates for Bielefeld again. Uh, hmm? um, it doesn't matter, I'll have that later. It's only a difference of about 1%. So, now, these are not uh, regular latitude-longitude coordinates anymore because the OSM to PG SQL tool uses the Google Mercator format that is usually used for all these um, uh, map APIs that are based or use the same format as Google Maps does. So, simple query that just checks for points in a rectangle using a spatial index. And we can see it's a bit slower than PostGIS, but it's in the same order of magnitude. And spatial light has no number here because without the spatial index, it took forever. <laughs> and with the spatial index in spatial light, it does not support SQL syntax. So I didn't bother to write a second test program for that. And <laughs> maybe back to your question, Sergey. It is faster when not having a spatial index on my ISAM than on InnoDB, because on my ISAM it does only have to do a 
sequential read of a file. But when using spatial indexes, it's really, when reading, it's about the same speed with my ISOM and with InnoDB. And so for the more complex example where we have the post boxes in Bielefeld query again, so not using a rectangle but another geometry. Then we have when just having a spatial index on the geom geometry columns, it takes about 16 seconds on both MariaDB and MySQL and about 14 seconds on PostGIS, so that's about almost equal. Again, spatial light, uh, the slide is cut off. There's again a question mark here because it doesn't support that in SQL. And when having um, an extra index on the city name, then both get faster, but there you see a bigger difference between MariaDB and MySQL that you need about a second and PostGIS that only needs about two-tenths of a second. So there it shows that the PostGIS or the PostGIS optimizer is a bit better about doing such query plans. But it's still roughly same order of magnitude, so it's not a colossal difference. Yeah, and as Sergey already asked, MariaDB and MySQL don't have a big difference. It was really minimal. The implementations are so similar that it doesn't really matter. Inserting data, so doing big imports, is obviously faster on my ISOM because it does not have to go take any care about transa transactional safety. It just has one big data file and just writes to the end while InnoDB has to do some more work and so it's a bit slower. And the select performance in my ISOM and InnoDB even using an index is so similar that there is no significant difference at all. So there's no reason to still use my ISOM if you only used it for the reason of being able to have a spatial index anymore. And also when in inserting large amounts of data, my ISOM and spatial light perform roughly the same as both are really just using flat tables and append to the end. And InnoDB and PostGIS, PostGIS also perform roughly the same as they both have the same kind of transactional overhead. But with PostGIS and PostGIS you have the, the advantage that you can use the copy mechanism that allows you to feed in uh, data directly without having the SQL insert wrapper. And we do not really have the same in on the MySQL and MariaDB side yet. So there is also low data on MySQL and MariaDB, but that does not have the read from standard in feature. So you would have to write to a file first. And it also has more parsing overhead on processing the well-known binary or well-known text formats. That's why I talked about the library extension on the client side earlier. If you could already convert data into the internal format on the client side, you could do much faster imports. Uh, and we've seen simple selects perform similarly good on MariaDB and PostGIS. PostGIS is slightly faster, but not really significantly. And, but unfortunately, it changes when queries get more complex and need to combine more indexes. And I didn't really compare it index performance and spatial light as it requires manual programming for every query instead of using SQL. And so in summary, we have all the OpenGIS required features now. Performance could be better, but is, I think, acceptable. Uh, 
So if you have a MySQL or MariaDB installation already and only want to add uh, just specific features, this is now a valid option. But if this is your primary focus, then maybe you're still better off with using PostGIS with its richer feature set. But if you, for example, have a large media wiki or WordPress installation, these are supposed to work on both MySQL and Postgres, but most plugins don't. So if you're bound to MySQL or MariaDB as you use certain plugins, you still have the option now to use GIS features in the same database as a valid option. Yeah, and that is actually all I wanted to talk about, and now we have time for questions. Thank you. Uh, and before I forget it, Sergey, what is on these sticks? What is on the USB sticks you gave me? Just a, just a picture or also software? <laughs> Okay, so we have MariaDB USB sticks here and we don't have any idea what's on them, but <laughs> they're free to take. And we also have toys that I don't know how to operate either. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that in the break. This is the presentation of the toy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so okay well, let's get serious again. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? I had uh, one hint uh, about the uh, spatial light uh, because mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the new uh, OS Geo format of the Geo package uh, mm -hmm. is built upon the mm -hmm. spatial light uh, okay. standard, so maybe you don't read uh, spatial light so often, but mm -hmm. uh, if you read a geo package, it's mm -hmm. more or less yeah, a spatial it's light. It's usually used under the hood and not yeah. really... Or, or as an exchange format. Oh, oh yes. I yeah. think it's also quite a good thing to, to change data, uh, data between mm -hmm. the databases or between mobile devices and a database and so on. Maybe even to, to oh yes, put your data from your PostgreSQL to I totally here. forgot about mobile devices okay. and spatial light, or oh, SQLite. Right. SQLite, right. yeah. Okay, no further questions? Okay, then mm. thank you for your presentation. Yeah, and if someone of you wants to have a printed map of their hometown or some other region of the world, we have the option now during the lunch break. Okay, so thank you again. <laughs>